guys so it is nice to be back um so soon and i am i'm just kind of uploading some of the videos that i uh, didn't get a chance to a couple of weeks ago so i'm really happy um to be kind of checking in and i really hope you're doing well so today we are going to be talking about this studio palette so this is a um, palette I got off Amazon. It, I think it's kind of a, a takeoff of the Whiskey Painters palette. So, um, but this one was $20 on Amazon. I will link it below. And you can see that I use it kind of in conjunction with one of these, usually like one of these little palettes um, or my favorites palette, which I'll show you in a minute. So this one here, I really enjoy the size of it and I like that I can um, just have this out or I can have one of the little ones out. This one here is my favorites palette. So quite often I will have uh, this palette and I kind of um, sort of nest them on top of each other there. And yeah, the favorites palette has kind of all my favorites from, you know, my, my kind of necessary colors. And then this one is kind of an expanded version of that. So I'd say it's got some more um, niche colors. Like instead of cobalt turquoise, I've got like the Sleeping Beauty and the Duochrome Aquamarine, things like that. So I've kind of expanded that kind of, you know, um, necessary palette. So this one took me a few years to collect. And um, you can see here, so we're in this handmade sketchbook we did on the channel. We did those transparent flowers in the last sketchbook flip through and finish off. And then the gold's there and today we are going to work in here and do the um this uh, what am i saying the palette swatches Okay, so the next thing I like to do after I kind of title the page is I like to make an emblem. Sometimes I actually do this when I'm not filming. I'll just do this while I'm waiting for the page to dry and you'll see some examples of that a little bit later on. Um, but for the video, I like to kind of title the page and then put an emblem in. You can see that I grabbed the pages that we did in the videos um, the emblem videos just a little while ago and I have just kind of recreated one of those frames in a little bit smaller format so here I am um, just getting water on my brush and just uh, adding a little bit to any colors I think need a little bit of time to reconstitute so um, I'm really and it's a really nice way to just kind of start the painting session so it only takes about 30 seconds or so, but it just wakes up the colors and um, prepares them for you. So uh, the way that I do the swatches is on the left, you can see that I like to add a little bit more pigment. And then on the right, I like to add some water and that helps me to figure out uh, how that color is going to uh, bloom and move and what kind of things I can get it to do in a painting. Okay, so I just realized I'm behind here. So the first one we did was Daniel Smith Lunar Violet and I will link all these or list them below. The one that we're doing here now is uh, Earth Mineral Arts Hematite Violet, which is just as lovely as the um, Daniel Smith one. You know, um, even um, Roman Schmalz has some really nice ones like that, which I have um, put in a recent haul. Um, this one here is the Windsor & Newton Good Book Mortuum and then now we're swatching the Windsor & Newton Cobalt Violet which is such a beautiful paint. Um, this is a notoriously hard one to re-wet but uh, like the actual pigment but um, Windsor & Newton does a really beautiful one really creamy and lovely to work with. Uh, this one here is the Nibs Watercolors so it's a handmade watercolor, watercolor shop and it is um, Katia, one of my favorites. And you can see the beautiful uh, movement there. So 
a lot of these you may be familiar with from my top favorite watercolors videos as well so this one here is a mix and I have a video about how I mix um, paints into a half pan but this one is Daniel Smith Sugarlight mixed with Daniel Smith Pearlescent White. It's one of my favorite mixes and just a really, really pretty lav sparkly lavender gray, basically. This one here is another one we did in that video and it's the Kaput Mortuum, which is above, which is, um, you know, directly above it. And it's um, with the Grumbacher Titanium White. So, yeah, really, really love that. So this one here is, and you can see like the, the change in the color. So uh, if I just use water with the Kaput Mortuum, I'm never going to get to that color that where I mix it with the white. So that's why I really love um, using the white. So the one I just swatched there was the Beam Paints. I think it's the Lavender. It's, I really love their paints and it's a beautiful color. This one here is the Wallace and Seymour. So again, um, they are a brand, they they really do beautiful artisan colours and this one is the Citadella Grey Schist and it's just a really, really, I love using this one to bring a little bit of texture into the painting. So this one here is another Nibs one. This is actually how I found her shop. I was looking up holographic watercolors on Etsy. So this is Sylvia. Um, yeah, a holographic silver. It's really lovely. Um, this one here is another one that we did in the um, kind of the one we did above, like how I make the half pans. So this one has a little bit of... Um, generally I really like to mix shell pink with the Kaput Mortuum and white but or just shell pink and Kaput Mortuum but I didn't have any left so I put a little bit of the um, Daniel Smith Organic Vermilion, the Kaput Mortuum and the white in to make that beautiful colour. So this one here is another one of my favourites and this is the Pale Wisteria by Turner Artist Watercolour. Um, yeah, and I really love, this one's kind of a similar colour to the, um, is it the Derwent Lightfast in the Oyster? It's this really pale, pale lavender. So you can see, I really, really love this kind of little palette of colours as well. And I want to, I hope to make some um, paintings one day with like that kind of colour palette. So then this one here is the Daniel Smith Tiger's Eye and this is really a cooler toned version I guess or um, a softer tone I should say of the um, Hematite Violet and yeah a slightly different um, colour tone but um, it's a really beautiful soft granulating brown and you can mix something like this with an ochre and a granulating like um, hematite or a granulating brown as well so a lot of these things um, you can probably mix um, so this one here is and I have a lot of videos on the channel about like how to mix colors and things so this one here is another one from earth mineral arts which is a handmade watercolor shop on Etsy she makes beautiful beautiful colors and things and this one here is the shell harp light so again, this is like a more specialized version of the Daniel Smith French Ochre, uh, which I really love and I, I use that quite a lot. And then this one here is the uh, Royal Talons Gouache. So this was just featured in the gold um, the golds video we just did. So um, you can kind of see it there, you know, amongst the other golds. And it is... Yeah, the light gold Royal Talon Squash. So I really love it. Again, like I use it like a watercolor. This one here is the Daniel Smith Yellow Iron Oxide. And this one paired with Cobalt Violet makes such a beautiful mix. <laughs> um, but I'm not sure. I don't often use it, so I'm not sure if I should. This is the only one in the palette I'm kind of debating whether to switch it with um, the Daniel Smith Italian Burnt Sienna or something like that. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure yet, but 
This one here is the Turner um, copper, so or it might be bronze. I will look that up and I will put the correct one in the um, in the um, description. But yeah, just a lovely kind of again like another metallic. This one here is the Nibs Azalea. So this is a fluorescent pink. So this color is not light fast and um, over time it will fade. I really like to um, either mix it with this one here. This is the Turner Pearl Red. So that once the fluorescent pigment fades, this mica will still be there. Um, or, and I talk a little bit about why I use the fluorescent pigment in the Candinsky video that I just did. Um, and this one here is one of my favorites, Holbein Shell Pink. Again, you can make this kind of a color with you know, a vermilion or an orange and some white, well, quite a lot of white, like a very little bit of the orange. Um, this one here is the Windsor & Newton Gouache. And this is, I think they've changed it to portrait pink. I think it used to be the light flesh or something like that. Um, yeah, so I, when I was getting the gouaches, I got uh, a couple of different, like I got one extra um, Windsor & Newton, one extra Holbein and one extra Royal Towns just to try the consistency of the gouache. So this is the one I picked from the... Windsor and Newton and you can see like it's such a pretty color in the half pan there but I, I feel like it's got kind of yellow undertones when I use it whereas this uh, this is the Wallace and Seymour Chin Abresse and it's got kind of more pink and cooler undertones and it's just so soft and sheer I really really love this color so I always default to this one when I'm painting but I really love the um just seeing the color of the Windsor & Newton one in the palette there so yeah this one here is the Daniel Smith interference copper and again this is a really beautiful one I have a video on how to um, use interference colors uh, but and I also really love the Rivervale watercolor version of any interference colors she does a really really beautiful um, so uh like i think it's uh what is it um so it's the phantom fire and yeah i have bought that off her quite a few times and i have also almost finished this tube as well so it's one i use a lot so i'm just also going through here I've got two whites in this little half pan. I've got the Daniel Smith Pearlescent White and the Grumbacher Titanium White. And you can see how beautifully and creamy that is and how easily it re-wets. And so I really love it. I think you guys really love it too. Um, and yeah, so that is the kind of first portion of the palette. You can see I'm not swatching them in exact order of the palettes, but just kind of going through on the page and um, swatching them. Yeah. So one question that I also get sometimes is whether or not the sparkle colors contaminate the other colors when you're painting and you can see here I'm just using the same cup of water and it's just really a half cup I'm not even there's not even that much water in the cup and if there's any um, contamination it's probably just from what's on the half pan rather than the water so if you are you know when I dip my paintbrush in the water I'm just barely dipping it at the top I'm not going um, or if I am kind of rinsing it out it's more to the side and to the top you don't want to um, be dipping it in deep enough so that it's kind of um, you know drudging up all of whatever's settled at the bottom because generally it will sort of more settle at the bottom 
so yeah you can see like there's no shimmer in you know in these colors here but so the one that I am doing now is the Opera Rose. I think it's a Daniel Smith. It could be Schmincke, either or, you know, any Opera Rose I love. It's basically the fluorescent pigment um, that we swatched with a magenta pigment as well. So that when the fluorescent fades, you'll have the magenta there. Uh, this one here, and I did skip one and we'll go back to it. This one here is the Daniel Smith Organic Vermilion. And... I love a good vermilion, really, really lovely color. Then this one here is the Daniel Smith Pyrrole Orange. Again, love this color. And either of these colors mixed with a white will make you a beautiful soft pink. So this one is my favorite lemon yellow this is the Schmincke lemon yellow but I am thinking of trying the Winsor & Newton cadmium free lemon yellow because I think it's got um, a better light fastness so yeah that's just one thing but I, I really do love this one I love Schmincke paints they're so creamy and really lovely um, so the one um, that we missed is the it's the second from the top like in the middle at the top of the page it's the um you can see it in the top left corner there it's the daniel smith permanent rose matter and you can see here um and this is like a quin rose so you can use any of these type of like quin rose colors this way but um, i'm watering it down very heavily so there's mostly water and there's a little bit of the pigment and you can see it makes this beautiful soft pink so sometimes I will use this underneath the um, azalea the fluorescent pink so that when that fades you'll still get this beautiful soft pink and yeah so again um, you know any of the quinrose colors I really like the I actually probably would not have bought this had I realized how close it was to the I think I already have the quinacridone rose um, but I it turns out I do kind of like this hue just a little bit more um, the Winsor Newton also have a really nice uh, rose matter it's not very light fast but it's still a really beautiful one so yeah and then you can see that from this one color like you look when I did the swatch how dark it is and then you look at that rose and how you can from that one color you can get such a wide variety of different shades so um, you know using more water you, you would not think that that rose was painted with that color if you just saw that swatch and then you can see there while I'm waiting for the page to dry I've also done a little emblem and I have drawn some um, just sketch some leaves and so that's what I like to do when the so you know generally if I'm not filming I will wait until I have time like when I'm waiting for something to dry and then I'll go back in and do the emblem and um, write the names and the title and all of that stuff okay so we're onto the blues the one I'm doing right now is the Winsor & Newton Smalt blue which I really love it's like a purple leaning blue and then the one before that is the Daniel Smith Iridescent Blue Silver. And you can see that, um, I think, in one of the videos last year, in uh, maybe a haul, I um, used that for shadows in a face. And I really love using um, that color that way. So this one here is another one kind of like the gouache there. This is the Paint and Paper Studio Mermaid Lago Lagoon, which I do have some... Um, info about their shop as well at the end so um yeah i really love the look of this color in the half pan it's super inspiring and it's not really one that i use a lot it's kind of like a prussian blue mixed with uh, shimmer but when i see it in that half pan i just absolutely love it so i love having it in the palette just as an inspiration really and then this one here is and I'll talk to you about a conversation that I had this last week maybe about like these type of colors so this one here is the um, Daniel Smith Sleeping Beauty 
So this one is, and I really like, you can get it again very dark, but I really like it in that soft powdery form. Um, this one here is the Daniel Smith Duochrome Aquamarine. So Sleeping Beauty Turquoise is one of the most expensive uh, pigments, one of the most expensive Daniel Smith ones, I think. But, um, and generally on Amazon, it's like $22, somewhere around there. But I have seen it as low as 12 and I think I got mine for 15 So, um, you know, if some of them are more expensive, shop around and kind of wait until there's sales or things like that as well. So this one here is the Sennelier Emerald Green. So I love a lot of Sennelier products. I'm not a huge fan of their watercolors. I think just after they put all that honey in and then they've got to put chemicals in to preserve it. So it just, it's not really my favorite, but um, yeah, I do love that color. So this one here is the um, Holbein Compose Green. So it's just a beautiful uh, mint green. So this one here is the Holbein Leaf Green and then we have the um, Daniel Smith e I think it's the iridescent jade could be interference but I think it's the iridescent jade um, and the funny thing about the two Holbein ones they're the compose green and the leaf green they were two of the first tubes that I got from uh, a local art shop and yeah so I just highly recommend getting tubes that you that I you know that you gravitate towards not not necessarily getting ones that I recommend or that you think might be good mixing ones but get colors that you really respond to and that you really love because that's the way you know I'm still painting with them years later um, and it helped me in the beginning to actually like when I when a painting didn't work out so this is the Daniel Smith duochrome lapis sunlight which is one of my favorites as well but um, when a painting didn't work out or something I was still drawn back to the colors so even though you have that kind of initial frustration and you know you still sort of keep coming back because the colors really inspire you and you want to keep you know trying to create something okay so we have finished the palette swatching portion of the video and um, while that was that page was drying you can see that I pulled over one of the printables and I've just taken elements of it I have simplified them and I am creating a little emblem and just a little practice piece um, that I think will kind of work you know on that sort of page there um, and I really like how this is coming together so I'm just kind of giving you a flip through I like when you flip through the um, sketchbooks for them to kind of tell a little bit of a visual story I, I don't know I mean it doesn't always have to be I've got plenty of like um, older sketchbooks that just uh, there's a lot of different things kind of put in there and uh, but yeah anyway so I am using the Sleeping Beauty turquoise and hematite violet here again in just really soft washes and I am just trying out new and different color combinations so I was having a conversation I think last week so hi if you're watching um, and we were just talking about different colors and kind of swapping some uh, color um, info and then she kind of asked me you know do I like um, blue green colors and so I sent her a bunch of so a bunch of uh, photos from my sort of saved my favorites uh, folder and they all have like this blue green coloring I mean one of my favorite um, pictures paintings is the Kandinsky couple writing um because i get a lot of questions about blues and i love a lot of um the renoir umbrellas one i love uh henry osawa tanner 
and it's the Good Shepherd and then he also has one Souvenirs from the Holy Land and they all have these really deep dark blues and very moody and mysterious um, and they're not necessarily colors that I paint with a lot even like Julia Barmanova is one of my favorite watercolorists and she uses a lot of like these Prussian blues and greens and phthalos and um, colors that again I don't use a lot but that doesn't mean that I don't appreciate them or like can respond to somebody else using them so I just I highly highly recommend you can see here like I've just done um, a page of swatches mixed with indigo and then a page the other page was a page uh, mixed with eternal summit the Isaro eternal summit so um, yeah I just highly recommend that you create a palette that just really speaks to you that that you respond to that kind of when you open it and not only inspires you but like it implores you to paint you know you you want to um, pick up that paintbrush and even if you know the the painting doesn't necessarily come out right that that paint the paint palette will inspire you and invite you again and again to just um, pick it up and try it until you do find that you are painting the way that you wanted to so one of the other ideas I wanted to share with you is um, and you can see that kind of these these junk journals are kind of spilling into my other sketchbooks and planners but um, create a an art journal or a junk journal so this one is you is using the printables in my shop and you can do a similar thing to this with the um, like the emblem ones that we've just done on the artist's journal one so these are three inch rings from Amazon you can get um, them from Walmart and I've just used little bits of ribbon little bits of yarn and I've crocheted around there um, a little bits of old lace and um, you can compile you know either pages so you can see like little bits of silk and I have a lot more about um, this over on my heirloom lux channel so that's all about like journaling and planning and making these pretty things like the um, like this paper here there's a whole video on using watercolors to age paper um, it's one of my favorite things to do but you can see here like you can you can just create a uh, like an art journal that has a lot of pages so some that you've collected like some are from Michaels some are cotton paper um, you know like some of the printables so it's already got the emblems there that you want to work on or things that you want to work on and then you can either um, like here's a little knitted pocket and you can either um, use these pages and like we did in the emblem workbook videos you know with um, a pencil or your paintbrush and gold ink or a, or a dip pen and, and ink you can go over these things and that will start to help you develop um, like what you want to paint you can also see like just hand stitching so I've just hand stitched the bottom there and made like a little um, side pocket um, yes yeah, so I think that's just a really good idea here is my current desk situation and you can see kind of my plan is hanging off the edge of the desk and that is how I am kind of um, doing anything at the minute so it's like it's just I've just kind of pulled it right towards me and then I'm still going strong with the like um, putting the emblems at the top of the page I'm actually a couple of weeks in advance now I think so I just kind of do one if it's in if if you know it's in, I'm inspired to do one um, and yeah so my sister and I went for a walk in the rain it was well snow but it was freezing rain it was oh, really cold um, but it was really nice so um, this is what I'm using and I've kind of shown this before and kind of talked a little bit about it but this is actually so this is a Leutsch term monthly um, from Jet Pens and this is all that I'm using at the minute as a sketchbook so I am basically doing like I started with just doing one square a day but I'm basically doing like three squares two or three squares a day um, and I've actually up to the end 
of February and I started March so um, it's just really enjoyable to do just a little bit of something so if I don't have time to do like a big you know project or pull out like a full sketchbook and and do something these are just little tiny sketches um, of things that are inspiring me things that I'm thinking about and also colors and looking at different color palettes so at the minute I am using a lot of pencil and the funny thing was um, I wasn't even planning to do this setup this year I, I had a set up last year that I showed over an heirloom lux with the Carnet de Poc um, notebook and that's just what I was planning to get as well for this year it was only $12 and it worked really well um, and then I think you guys really like them as well so they're sold out everywhere so I had to kind of start looking again so I um, I first got this Loach term one and then I was a little bit disappointed because it only had the monthlies and then just it was a just a notebook um, and I didn't know what I would use it for but uh, yeah I have just been using it as a sketchbook so um, that is working out quite well so and I haven't um, had the chance to you know sit down and kind of do long painting sessions or work on things that I like to work on so I am really enjoying just kind of condensing little ideas um, like you can see the trees there and the and the chairs this month is or well, this month but really it was like two weeks is and you know quite a few chairs there and um, like a different brighter color palette so you can see like the tree from last you know the January tree and then the February tree there um, and I don't mind that it's not like the actual month so I'm actually just really enjoying kind of seeing the color progression and kind of the mood I was in or the colors I was gravitating towards so um, yeah and also like you could see there that like the little kind of landscape and just different things so as I and I'll kind of show you in a minute what I'm working on while I'm not posting regularly but um, hopefully as I am able to do more videos I'd really like to try and do some um, mini courses so I feel like it's the only way I'm going to get more time to paint and also I'll be able to take you guys on a journey like from the initial stages of um, you know concept and um, and you know thumbnail sketches and compositional elements and kind of all the things that go into creating a painting from start to finish and um, things that I you know it I can't obviously go into that much detail on a YouTube video so yeah I'm hoping to maybe do something like that in the future uh, you can see here I've started on the next month as well so these are like more purple tones and this is a really nice and easy way to explore different color palettes to explore different ideas that you're having as well so you do not have to have like this you know book you can use the sketchbook that you're in and you could actually make a grid um, whether it's a monthly one or a weekly one or just maybe you know nine little squares that you want to complete by the end of the week or by you know the end of the month or something like that so and then start with picking you know a few colors you can see like these were the first colors that I picked and then it, it just kind of grew and grew from there you'll also see me swatching on a different piece of paper here and uh, just kind of trying out the colors that I wanted to use and I find that this always helps me to find some really nice color combinations um, like here for example I think I show you here um, I can't remember which colors they are but I think I do show you the rosy beige in the Prismacolor the Derwent Light Fast Oyster Derwent Drawing Pencil in Mars Violet and then I also like to add the uh, Derwent Light Fast in Fossil Grey that's one of my favorite uh, favorites there as well so um what else we it is saturday here we are kind of in the middle of a snow globe in see the desk 
um so i am not sure if the wi-fi is patchy so we'll see when i can upload this but i just wanted to show you here so this is my sit up board my home gym at the side of my desk and i put like my, my feet hang down there and then my my arms go up here where your feet normally go and it's not on an incline or anything it's just like the bottom incline it's very very you know not steep or anything um, but I hang my arms over the you know the footrest kind of thing and um, so like five years ago or something I had sciatica really badly and it took me about a year of trial and error to try and figure out what to do how to cope how to strengthen my back and everything like that so um, I I kind of I've, I will show you these exercises and it took me a long time like to get to these bottom three exercises that was like probably over a year so it wasn't like this was basically where I started so like I had my knees bent my elbows bent and then gradually I'd be able to um, straighten out my legs and then straighten out my arms to hold the like the back like the ankle rest kind of thing and then gradually over time I mean like a long a long time like it was like five weeks before I could even try and like lift one leg one knee up um, yeah and so anyway I'm back to those kind of exercises right back not right back at the beginning but pretty you know pretty far back so that is what I need to do to just be able to keep filming and things so that's where I am and you can see here like I just showed you the fuchsia the Daniel Smith fuchsia from that rock and then those ones were the um rose quartz I would really love a paint out of rose quartz but anyway so yeah here's the like little snow globe we're in um yeah so I I, I'm, I'm hoping to probably I might be posting like every two to three weeks I'll see how I go but if I'm not here don't panic but if so I I will hopefully see you fairly soon okay bye